it is Zach Tower and welcome to episode 5 of our Digimon Tamers review series. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the US Digivolving Gargamon to Andromon figure. This episode was only made possible by Maronite. It's thanks to him that I was able to acquire this figure for review. Straight off the bat, I'm just going to be honest and upfront and preface this review with the fact that I think this is the absolute worst Digivolving figure in the line. This figure is a perfect storm of everything that can go wrong with a figure. On first glance though, the Gargamon mode may look pretty good. Great even. The paint is great, the sculpting is great, not really a ton of kibble if any. This figure can't be all that bad, can it? No, 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 no. Don't be fooled. That's just the figure luring you into a false sense of security, my friends. For you see, the figure begins to quite literally fall apart when you breathe on it. <sighs> this, ladies and gentlemen, is the main deal breaker when it comes to this figure. Because of the horrible hip joints and top heavy nature of the figure, there is absolutely no way you're going to be able to get any sort of playability out of this figure. Oh, but that's not so bad, Actar. Just a bit of floor polish, maybe a dab of super glue here and there will fix joints right up. Oh, I remember when I was that naive. No, 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 no. For you see, these joints are not just loose because of poor tolerances. These joints are loose because of a common manufacturing defect that causes Andromon's waist to explode in the package. I'm not kidding. Just like the Digivolving Leomon figure we saw last episode, almost every single Digivolving Gargamon to Andromon figure has broken hips thanks to either poor plastics or poor design. Perhaps a combination of the two. Unlike the Leomon figure, however, both modes are heavily compromised because of it. In fact, my figure is holding on by a thread as is. This problem becomes even more apparent and more crippling in Andromon mode. But before that, let's just take a look at the articulation. Yeah, like that's gonna count for anything. The arm articulation, admittedly, is great, okay? The arms can go all the way around. Uh, they have very, very slight in and out movement. There's an elbow joint. There is a swivel joint above the elbow. There is no swivel joint below the elbow. Yeah, it's pretty much it actually huh i thought there was more to it but evidently not and as for his legs uh yeah the less we talk about them the better but as for his feet they are on ball joints so they can go all the way around up and down and side to side and just for the sake of a complete review i suppose we could take a look at the andromon mode Cardo slash matrix evolution we first start by breaking apart, well, let's not use that word, uh, by splitting apart Gardramon's front chest section and swinging them around over his head. Take the Andromon arms and unpack them from the top and split them apart. Fold the arms down and take this entire Gardramon section, pull it up and swing it all the way to the back. Collapse Gardramon's arms at two points. Swing them around and store them inside the Gargamon backpack. Take the legs and extend them as carefully as you can. Rotate the legs around at this thigh swivel. Very, very carefully extend Andromon's waist. Ah. Rotate his backpack into place and extend his hands. And there we go. And uh, yeah, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Andromon mode. As you may have seen from the transformation, the Gargamon mode was extremely hollow, but that's only because the only way they were ever going to make this figure a reality was by making him a shell former. And this is shell forming at its worst. The Gargamon panels aren't supposed to represent a cape or wings or a brave shield. The panels are just pure, unadulterated, Kibble. Unlike many other lazy transforming toy designs, there was really zero effort to even attempt to integrate the two modes. 
and yes thanks to a combination of both the backpack and the exploding hips there was absolutely no way in hell this figure was ever going to be able to stand up on its own yeah you could try to fudge it um, by using his hands as makeshift struts by resting them against the back of his legs but that's pretty much the only pose you're going to get he looks like a schoolgirl waiting to give his senpai a love letter after school <laughs> what on earth am i doing oh my god this is what bad figures do to me i'm, I'm telling you this literally crippling backpack is a real shame because articulation wise he's actually pretty decent the head has a uh, limited movement the arms can move forwards and backwards slightly in and out he does have a rotation joint above the elbow and he does have like a elbow joint that's slightly more than 90 degrees and as for his legs well you know his legs um you know <laughs> Swivel, uh, swivel at the legs and uh, thighs, sorry. And he also ha does have a, uh, well, disconcertingly tight knee joint, which I'm not even going to attempt to bend. And he does have, he does still retain the ball jointed feet from his uh, Gaudremont mode. And to be fair, the details are also rather nice. The sculpting is good and the paint is frankly phenomenal. They actually bothered to paint in all of that necrotic flash detail. Sadly, none of them, the articulation, the paint, can redeem the broken hip joints and horrendous backpack. In conclusion, this is a poorly designed figure with a false transformation that suffers from a critical QC issue. Even if you were a huge fan of Gaudremon or Andromon, I would personally stay far, far away from this figure. And that's not going to be a very difficult thing to do, seeing how rare and expensive this guy is new. But... If you just have to have this figure for some inexplicable, possibly masochistic purpose, as the figure can only reliably balance in Gaudremon mode, that's the mode I'd buy the figure for. Like Leomon, seeing how Gaudremon made an appearance in pretty much every iteration of the franchise, he can be added to any Digimon display without feeling out of place. The only way you can get any kind of enjoyment out of this figure's Andromon mode, aside from maybe using a stand, is by perhaps removing the backpack and converting it into a non-transforming Andromon figure. But then again, you might as well just buy a cheaper, non-transforming Andromon figure and be done with it. And now that you've seen the worst, it can only go up from here. And boy, does it go way, way up. So, this is Akta saying, see you guys in the next episode of our Digimon Tamers series of reviews.